Have you ever wondered how some people seem to handle life's ups and downs so well, maintaining unwavering serenity and wisdom? However, here's the surprising truth. It's not just a matter of luck or genetics. The Stoics, ancient philosophers, developed a series of secrets that helped them face life's challenges with grace and wisdom. But wait, we're not talking about complicated techniques or magical formulas. In this video, we'll uncover the 10 secrets of the Stoics to attain wisdom, revealing how these timeless principles can transform your life. Get ready for a journey of discovery that will challenge your beliefs and inspire lasting changes. First, be a friend to yourself. Have you ever stopped to think about how you treat yourself? I mean, how you talk to yourself when something doesn't go as planned? It's important that you be a friend to yourself. That means, just like you would be understanding and kind to a friend who makes a mistake, you need to be that way with yourself too. Compassion and self-discipline are key in this process. Compassion allows you to acknowledge your mistakes without being too hard on yourself, understanding that we're all human and constantly learning. And self-discipline is what will help you correct those mistakes and move forward, making better choices in the future. Epictetus, a wise Stoic, had a unique way of looking at losses. He used to say, never say that you lost something, just say that you returned it. This shows how perspective can change everything. Instead of focusing on the negativity of loss, he reminds us to see the situation in a different, more positive and liberating way. Another great thinker from ancient times reminds us of a profound truth. The greatest wealth is self-sufficiency. This means that true wealth isn't in material possessions or what others think of us, but rather in our ability to support and satisfy ourselves with what we already have within ourselves. So always remember to be a friend to yourself. Be kind, be understanding. Acknowledge your flaws, but also recognize your strengths. Cultivate self-discipline to move forward and make choices that lead you in the right direction. And above all, remember that true wealth lies in your ability to be content with yourself, regardless of external circumstances. Second, reframe a problem as a challenge. You know when life throws a situation at you and everything seems a bit complicated? Stoics had a pretty cool way of looking at these moments. They saw problems as challenges and even as opportunities. It's like they'd say, hey, look at this not as something that knocks you down, but as a chance to grow. Have you heard of the Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius? He used to write some really inspiring things in his meditations. One of them is this, the obstacle is the way. Think about it, what did he mean by that? That what seems to be in your way actually might be the way itself, for you to overcome and evolve. And there's a quote from a guy named Epictetus that also helps understand this whole idea. He said, it's not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of their significance. That's deep, but not hard to understand. In fact, many times we ourselves feel bad because of our own ideas, not because of the things themselves. Changing how we see things can make a big difference. So when something difficult comes your way, why not take a closer look? Instead of thinking, oh, how unlucky, think, what an interesting challenge. It's like turning a tough game into an exciting adventure. And you know what's even better? Every time you face and overcome a challenge, you become stronger, wiser. It's like training for life, you know? You learn new things, develop skills you didn't even know you had. It's like becoming a superhero, but in real life. So, next time life throws you a big problem, remember the words of Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus. See it as an opportunity for growth, a chance to become even better. And who knows, you might even start seeing obstacles as part of the path itself. Third, practice of self-discipline. So let's talk about self-discipline. This is something the Stoics took very seriously and with good reason. It's like, you know, having control over your actions and emotions. It's like when you want to watch TV, but you know you need to study. Self-discipline is what helps you choose what's best for the long term, even if it's hard now. You know what Seneca once said, he said, where there is virtue, there is also tranquility. That's pretty deep, isn't it? Like, when you do the right thing, when you act with virtue, you find inner peace. And that's kind of what we're all aiming for, right? And there's another quote from Seneca that says, fortune favors the prepared mind. That means when you're disciplined, when you prepare and work hard, 
you're more ready to seize the opportunities that come your way in life. It's like always being prepared for whatever comes next. Now I know it can be hard to be disciplined sometimes, especially when there are so many distractions out there. But the Stoics teach us that self-discipline is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So you can start small, setting achievable goals. For example, if you want to be more disciplined with your time, you can start by setting specific times for certain activities, like studying, exercising, or relaxing. Also, it's important to stay focused on your long-term goals. When you're faced with temptations or distractions, think about what's most important to you and the impact your choices will have on the future. And don't forget to reward yourself for your effort and progress. Acknowledge your achievements no matter how small and celebrate your victories along the way. So, my tip is, be kind to yourself, but also be firm. Remember that self-discipline is a journey and every step you take in the right direction is a step toward your own tranquility and success. Fourth, detachment from material possessions, gratitude for what you have. When we stop to think about it, we realize that often we're chasing after things that, in the end, don't bring us that much happiness. It's like we're stuck in an endless race, always wanting more and more. But then the Stoics, these guys had a very different view on that. They said that true freedom comes when we detach ourselves from material possessions and learn to be grateful for what we already have. Remember Zenon of Sidium, the guy who started this whole Stoicism thing? Well, he lived in a really simple way without accumulating stuff. For him, the important thing was to cultivate virtue, not to have a bunch of expensive things. Imagine if we brought that into our lives. A quote from Seneca that always strikes me is this, Contentment is natural wealth, luxury, artificial poverty. That's deep, right? He's saying that true wealth doesn't come from the material possessions we accumulate, but from our ability to find joy and contentment in the simple things in life. Think about it. How many times have we caught ourselves wishing for the newest car, the bigger house, the fancier clothes? But does all that really bring us lasting happiness? The Stoics would say no. They teach us that real happiness lies more in being grateful for what we already have, in enjoying simple moments with loved ones, in cultivating virtues like generosity and compassion. When we detach ourselves from the constant desire for more things, we free ourselves. We're no longer trapped in this crazy race for status and wealth. We learn to value what truly matters in life. And you know what's cool? When we feel more free inside, we become more capable of facing life's challenges with courage and serenity. So my friend, how about starting to practice a little bit of this detachment? You don't have to give up everything and become a hermit, but how about valuing the simple things in life more? Be thankful for what you have, cultivate gratitude in your daily life, and see how it can bring you a sense of peace and fulfillment that no material possession can provide. Fifth. Practice of Empathy and Compassion You already know practicing empathy and compassion is really essential for a balanced and peaceful life, especially when it comes to following Stoic principles. It's like putting yourself in someone else's shoes, understanding what they're going through and showing compassion. The master Epictetus had a very straightforward way of putting it. He used to say, First tell yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. In other words, before acting, you need to understand how it would feel to be in the other person's shoes. That's the core of empathy, isn't it? And there's a powerful quote from Seneca too. To love humanity is impossible, but to love a human being is possible. This shows that, while we may not be able to love all of humanity at once, we can indeed develop deep love and compassion for each individual person. And that's what matters, isn't it? When you practice empathy and compassion, you're acting in accordance with human nature because we are social beings and we need each other to live well. It's like reaching out to help someone going through a tough time. And guess what? Not only does this help the other person, but it also brings a sense of peace and fulfillment to you. So, next time you find yourself in a situation where someone needs support or understanding, try putting yourself in their shoes. Try to imagine what it would be like to be in that situation and how you would like to be treated.
This will help you act with empathy and compassion, and it will make a big difference in that person's life, as well as bring more serenity to your own life. And remember, it doesn't have to be anything grandiose. Sometimes a simple act of kindness or a word of comfort can make all the difference to someone going through difficulties. So be open to practicing empathy and compassion in your daily life. You'll be amazed at the positive impact it can have, both for others and for yourself. Sixth, never play the victim. Often when something goes wrong in our lives, the first reaction is to feel like a victim, isn't it? But I learned something from the Stoics that completely changed my perspective. Never play the victim. This means it's important to take responsibility for our own actions and emotions. We can't simply blame the world or others when something goes wrong. It's about understanding that we have control over how we react to situations. Remember that incredible quote from Marcus Aurelius? He said, It is not the experience that makes us better, but the way we deal with the experience. This means that no matter what happens, what really matters is how we choose to respond to it. So, next time something doesn't go as planned instead of feeling like a victim, take a moment to think about how you can handle the situation in the best possible way. It may not be easy, but that's where the key to personal growth and wisdom lies. And Seneca, another great Stoic philosopher, said something that really resonates with me. No man is free while many are guilty. This means that while we blame others or circumstances for our unhappiness, we are depriving ourselves of true freedom. Taking responsibility for our own lives gives us the power to change things for the better. It means we are not at the mercy of circumstances, but rather, we are the captains of our own destiny. So when you find yourself thinking about playing the victim, remember these wise words from the Stoics. Take control of your life, be responsible for your choices and actions, and you'll see how this can completely transform your outlook on the world. Seventh, spending some time in solitude. Have you ever stopped to think about how important it is to spend some time alone every now and then? Solitude, often seen as something negative, can actually be quite beneficial for us. You know why? Because it's in those moments that we can truly connect with ourselves, reflect on our lives, and get to know ourselves better. Look, remember that Roman philosopher named Marcus Aurelius? He was an emperor, but he was also a great admirer of solitude. He used to retreat to a quiet place, away from the distractions of the world, to be able to think and reflect on his actions and emotions. Imagine that. Even an emperor needed some time alone. And there's this amazing quote by Seneca that says, Solitude is the place where we find peace. And isn't he right? When we're alone, away from the noise and worries of everyday life, we can finally find some calm and inner peace. It's like our mind gets a chance to breathe a little, you know? And it doesn't have to be anything complicated. You can simply find a quiet corner in your house, or even take a solo walk in nature. The important thing is to give yourself this time to be with yourself, without distractions, and really connect with your thoughts and feelings. When we're alone, we also have the opportunity to get to know ourselves better. We can reflect on our dreams, our fears, our life goals. It's like taking a journey into ourselves, exploring every corner of our soul. So why not take some time to be in solitude? You'll see how it can work wonders for your mind and heart. After all, as Seneca said, it's in solitude that we find true peace and wisdom. Eighth, focus on what you can control. Life can definitely be messy, right? We worry about so many things, but in the end, not everything is under our control. That's where a valuable lesson from the Stoics comes in. Focus on what we can control. I remember a powerful quote by Epictetus. Only the things in our power are truly ours. Think about that for a moment. What's under our control is what really matters. Right, but what about the rest? Well, the rest isn't ours to manipulate. I know it can be hard to accept that sometimes. We want to control everything, don't we? But the reality is that we can't. And that's where stoic wisdom comes in. Learning to differentiate what we can and cannot control. This doesn't mean being passive or resigned. It simply means directing our energy to what we can actually influence. Because when we worry about things beyond our reach, we just become more stressed and anxious. Remember that quote by Epictetus. 
What is not in my control does not belong to me. It's like a light at the end of the tunnel, isn't it? When you accept this idea, you realize that you can release a huge weight from your shoulders. So, the next time you feel overwhelmed or worried about something, stop and ask yourself, is this under my control? If it's not, let it go. Focus on what you can do, on what you can change. This will not only bring you more inner peace, but it will also help you be more efficient and productive. After all, when we direct our energy to what we can control, we can do much better work. So my friend, always remember, focus on what you can control. Leave the rest for the universe to handle. Ninth, mind-body connection. You know, when we think about taking care of ourselves, we usually focus only on the mind, right? Like reading books, meditating, those sorts of things. But check this out. The Stoics teach us the importance of taking care of both the mind and the body. Yes, they go hand in hand, like a team that needs to work in harmony. Let me share a really cool quote from Seneca that illustrates this well. The mind needs books as a sword needs a whetstone. This means that just like a sword needs to be sharpened to fulfill its purpose, our minds need to be fed with knowledge to stay sharp and ready to handle life's challenges. And you know what else? The Stoics also remind us that the health of the body is the freedom of the soul. Think about it. When our body is well, we feel lighter, more capable of dealing with things. It's like physical health gives a boost to our mental health. After all, you can't completely separate one from the other, right? If the mind is overwhelmed, the body feels it and vice versa. So, the deal is to find a balance there, taking care of the mind and body as if they were journey partners. This can range from practicing physical exercises that make you feel good to setting aside time every day to relax and clear your head. And it doesn't have to be anything too complicated, okay? Sometimes just a walk or a few minutes of meditation can make all the difference. Oh, and don't forget that taking care of your diet is also part of it. What we put into our bodies directly affects how the mind functions. So, choose foods that make you feel good, that give you energy and make you feel light. Got it? In the end, it's all about connecting with yourself, listening to yourself, and taking care of yourself for real. After all, you're the only one who can do that for you. So why not start today to take care of both your mind and body? I'm sure it will make a huge difference in your life. 10th, laugh at your anger. Have you ever had one of those days when it feels like everything is conspiring against you? That moment when anger takes over and you feel like you're about to explode? Well, my friend, you're not alone in this. The good news is that the Stoics have an incredible perspective on how to deal with this overwhelming emotion. Laugh at your anger. It may seem strange at first, but think about it. When you're furious, it's often because something didn't go as you expected. But, as the wise Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react that matters. This means that even though we can't control every situation that arises in our lives, we can control how we choose to react to them. Here's the key. Instead of letting anger take over, take a step back and look at the situation from a broader perspective. Ask yourself, does this situation really matter that much? Is it worth spending my energy and mental health getting so upset? Remember the wise words of Marcus Aurelius, never let anger control you. This means that even when you feel this emotion boiling inside you, you still have the power to choose how to respond. You can choose to let anger take over and act impulsively, or you can choose to step back and find a healthier way to deal with the situation. An effective way to do this is to find humor in the situation. Yes, that's right, laugh. Sometimes life puts us in such absurd situations that the only thing we can do is laugh. Finding humor in the situation not only relieves tension, but also allows us to see things from a different, lighter perspective. So the next time you feel anger starting to bubble up inside you, take a deep breath, step back, and remember, you have the power to choose how to respond. And if all else fails, have a good laugh. After all, as Charles Chaplin said, a day without laughter is a day wasted. True wisdom lies in learning to navigate the turbulent waters of life with calm and clarity. First, remember to be a friend to yourself. Just as you would for a dear friend, be kind and understanding to yourself. Self-compassion is a key aspect of Stoic wisdom. 
Next, reframe problems as challenges. See obstacles as opportunities for growth and learning, instead of letting them knock you down. Practice self-discipline in all areas of your life. Be consistent and committed to your goals, and you'll see amazing results. Detach from material possessions and learn to cherish what truly matters. Gratitude is a powerful tool for finding happiness and contentment. Don't forget empathy and compassion. Put yourself in others' shoes and treat everyone with kindness and respect. Also, never play the victim. Take responsibility for your choices and actions, and you'll be in control of your life. Spend some time in solitude to reconnect with yourself and find inner peace. Sometimes it's in moments of silence that we find the answers we seek. Focus on what you can control and let go of what's beyond your power. This will bring a sense of calm and tranquility to your life. Don't forget the mind-body connection. Take care of your physical and mental health to achieve true balance. And last but not least, laugh at your anger. Find humor in difficult situations and remember that you always have the power to choose how to react. So my friend, now that you know these secrets, why not subscribe to our channel for more inspiring content on wisdom and self-discovery and leave a comment letting us know if you already apply any of these concepts in your life. Together, we can continue this journey toward a wiser and fuller life. I'm excited to see the transformations you'll make in your life by applying these stoic principles. My name is Ricardo, a big hug, and God bless.